Hello and welcome to Sovereign RPG. Today we're going to be starting a new series, a sort of let's play slash cut it up because it's going to take quite a long time to cover a lot of the stuff that we're going to be doing in this series. We're going to be playing EVE Online and what we're going to be doing is starting an account from scratch. Now we're not going to do an alpha account because literally I, d I don't want to be sitting there for hours and hours and hours and waiting for twice the amount of SP to gain. It's going to take forever. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with Omega from the beginning, which is what I would do normally when I'm playing a new game anyway. I will always go for the monthly subscription if that is a choice. I'll always go for the extra XP, more gold, etc, etc. That's just the way I play personally. So if you're looking for like a, a zero from alpha to omega series, this isn't quite it, even though we're going to be starting from the beginning. And the reason why I'm doing the omega is just to speed up time a little bit. So we're not going into the release of Eve Echoes, for instance, because this could take a long time to do. What we're going to be doing with this series is probably going to be one to two episodes a week uh, sort of like it's spend it out because it's going to take quite a lot of time in between to do what i need to do so what we're going to be doing is starting up a new character and we're going to go for galente for this one now i would normally 100 percent of the time go amar always will always go amar so what we're going to do is start from the bottom maybe get some contracts going with some npcs and then we'll try to move on to contracts made by players and we're going to try to not get involved in a lot of the scammy stuff and get involved with uh well we'll see how it goes we'll see if we get screwed over on the way through which is the basic motto of eve online so without further ado let's get into making the character we're going to go with galente because they have the best hauling ships and they have the best lower tier ships and they have more specialized hauling ships than depending on what we're going to be doing at the time i hate the way their ships look and that, that's i don't know she looks pretty good from the get-go so i think we're gonna go with that so we're not gonna spend too much time on this part of it what i might do for this actual series is when we finish the series and the account is done with and i won't no longer use this character unless i really start enjoying hauling who knows i might make this as a full-time account while i'm playing eve echoes but what i want to do is give away the account at the end of the series so once we figure out uh, what's going on we'll get to the point we need to get to and sort of what i want to do is either get to a point where i am completely and utterly in control of what's going on and i, I know exactly what's happening and we've got a, we we're making the money we're in the green we're not losing too much and we've learned how to do hauling properly or we hit a billion isk whichever one we do first that'll be sort of the end of the series and what i'll do is i'll give away the account to whoever uh, wins via like it'll just be names in a hat type thing so she's already hot so we'll keep her like that that's fine we d well, i don't know what's good what uh, 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 it's a bit better she is kind of hot she looks like my ex-girlfriend yeah, yeah that, that's a lie i didn't have an ex-girlfriend i'm really really bad with names so we went we decided to just i'm just really bad with naming characters so it's called sovereign rpg yt for youtube so whoever gets this character later is going to have a really fun time with a shitty name character creation is starting and we're going to go through this god awful tutorial it's better now than it was it was really bad before well i actually figured out how to skip the introduction i've never i have not done this uh like the beginning experience in a while so i didn't even know that that was an option but we are in sister so we'll go to we'll warp in here we'll go dock it here and then we'll find out which career agent we're going to be going to straight from the beginning skill is in the abyss that must be an event at this moment in time but we're not going to get involved in that because we're going to be playing pacifists pacifists in eve online usually just get fucked but we're going to try okay we're going to try so what we've also done for this character is I've gone and used my uh, I've gone and used my recruiter friend link on my main account and that's given us 1 million skill points to start with. Now this is an everyday occurrence so this is not like oh you're cheating with a million skill points from the get go. Anyone can do this. I will actually put the recruiter friend link for my main account and this account if you want to help this series get along and start giving so we don't have to pay for the 30 days Omega every single time then you can do that every time someone uses my recruiter friend link and becomes omega i get 15 days for example so it's actually quite good or oh, it's something along those lines i actually have to put that down in the, the description and we can do that to help this character and help the series move on i'll be right back because i'm going to make this character omega 
And we are back and we've just got to an Omega State on the clone of a two times speed. You can train any of the 448 skills and you can use any of the 355 unique ships to fly once you have got those skills. And we can get the Triglavian ships which we aren't going to use actually because we're not going to be fighting. And they're very, very, very expensive and it takes a long time and the, even the skill books just themselves are very, very fucking expensive. But they are well worth it if you are playing that way. Let's claim that some of this Alpha and Omega stuff. We got over here some more skill points. Capsular Day Fireworks. That's for tomorrow, I guess. And we got all of this stuff we need to collect. All of these random ass skins. And everything is being clicked because everything's on the screen. Right, so here's the character. We have Sovereign RPG YT. And here, down this bottom here, we have all of our skills. So this is what skills we can access or buy right now we haven't got much isk right now so we're actually gonna have to find the stuff and maybe just start and we'll train it to level four to start off with that's gonna take three days and something four days four hours because we haven't updated our character so when we go into the character you have these things called attributes these attributes you can change so when you remap you can lower some down and raise some up depending on your skills what you have learning at the time so if you these can this skill line can go up for like 365 days so if you get 365 days worth of uh skills queued up that's when you go in and you go into a third party program. There's a, there's a few of them. I will have, put a link down in the description for one that I would I normally use. So what you do is you put all the you put your character details in there. You use the API. The, it will pick up the character, it'll pick up the skill queue, and then it will calculate what best attributes you have for the 365 days. And this is the best way for you to do it. So you have two bonus remaps, and then you can remap, and then once a year you can remap again. So you really need to. Why have I got a total net worth of 322 million isk? Oh, that's the plex that we got, the 110 plex. So we can get a decent start off with just starting the account that way. That's not too bad. We're not going to be doing that, but what can we say? Right, so that's the attributes. These lower and raise using the remap button. We don't always want to use it, so you can cancel that. You like drop some points here and raise some points in perception. And that will lower the time it takes to do certain skills, for example. Let me show you something in the ship tree. Right, so we're in Galente. And we're going to be working down at the hauler side. So we have these ships here. And an easy way for you to sort of find out what skills you need to do at the beginning. While you don't know much about the game, there is actually some information here. On this, you see this little part here, there's normally numbers in there. This is called mastery. So if you get the information of a ship up and you go into the mastery tab, so you right click the ship in the ship tree and then you go into show info, then you go to the mastery tab. This will show you what skills, all, but it shows you all skills that are good for the ship that you are going into. Like a lot of these skills you don't need to skill up in because they are, while they're useful for the ship, they're not priority. So you have to sort of like juggle which is the highest priority things to get. For example, your mechanics, your hull upgrades, your CPU management, energy grid upgrades, that sort of stuff. Your high speed maneuvering, evasive maneuvering, which is your afterburners and your micro warp drives. Now this is kind of turning into a tutorial for the beginning here, but it's just I'm sort of giving you the basics while we get into it. So the basic operation of starships, 2% improved ship agility. And ship agility is how quickly the ship turns on its axis. So like how quickly you can move the reason why we went Galente is because each of these ships have a specialization. So the Krios has a specialization in a higher ore capacity, uh, mineral capacity. So 10% bonus to ship mineral hold. So this is what you break your ore down into. So for instance, you're breaking Veldspar into Tritanium, you're breaking Spodumane into Tritanium, Pyrite, etc, etc. The minerals, the Tritanium and Pyrite, they are what can fit in this ship. And then you've got the Nereus, which have ship cargo capacity. So this is your standard t1 frigate this is what we're going to start to use but first we're going to be going and doing the quests what this game's version of quests are which we go to the career agent and that will give us a ship so we don't have to worry too much about that for now but these all individually the epithal they use planetary commodities which is your pi stuff now in eve online pi is not as easy as it was in echoes so this is it's 
not worth getting into unless you're going full time into EVE Online. Let's just say that for it's better off just buying the stuff. So you have the Miasmos, which is ship or hold. So you use the Miasmos to fly your ore from A to B. From you, you might be mining off somewhere in high sec away from the trade hub, and you want to bring your ore over to use a Miasmos. That would be it's got the highest ore hold capacity, and it, it can get quite a lot of ore in there. And then you've got the Itron Mark V, which is basically just a giant cargo ship, but it's like paper. If someone sneezes at you, it's going to explode. T1 ships are not really what you want to use in the beginning, but it's all you can use in the beginning. So this is what we're going to need to test out, what we want to get to. We want to be able to move and fly the Okata. So the Okata is what we want. This is the end game for what we want to do as high sec haulers. You can, for instance, go and start doing the freighter stuff, but with the freighters, they're very, they're a massive, they're a massive fucking target. It's just freighters are great if you have a corp of people to help you out and you've got multiple accounts one jumping ahead of you one jumping behind you just to make sure that no one's following you or there's no one ahead of you there's no gate camps because people can kill you in high sec they'll they'll stop you they'll bump you away from a gate and they'll blow your shit up and then you'll lose everything so what our end game is we're going to be going for the okata which is uses a fleet hangar capacity and this can get upwards of 62k if i remember correctly 62.5k and there's a way that you can actually get the ship's ehp up to 450k that's a lot of ehp they can be quite expensive obviously 247 million just for the hull and then you're probably looking at about 750 million to actually get the 450k ehp but what you can have on there is a micro jump drive so you that for instance when you get inside of the ship and they try and gate camp you you can literally just jump from where you are 100 kilometers away in any direction that you're facing and you'll be 100 kilometers away from the people that were trying to attack you on the gate then you just put your cloak on put your stealth cloak get out of the way start heading off in a direction wait for them to leave or wait for them to get on another target then you come out and then you warp away it's just a, it's just an all-round good ship. There are other ones you can use, but I prefer to use the Okata. I prefer the look of the Kaldari ones, but the Kaldari DST is a bit slower, and it doesn't have as much capacity to carry stuff as this one. This one gets two warp core strength. They all get the same bonuses, if I remember correctly, but that may have changed. They all get the same bonuses, I guess. For some reason, I don't seem to remember that, but I've never really been a hauler. I've used, I've mainly used blockade runners, being in wormholes, getting stuff in and out in a blockade runner is just the way forward. You just covert ops cloak, you're flying in, flying out. 10k capacity, you can carry one cruiser, but it's worth it in the end. You don't get blown up that way. So what we're going to do, as I was saying before, we're going to start off by probably... They're all going to be using the same skills, etc. So what we'll do is we'll go for the Nereus. We're going to show info on the Nereus, we'll go to Mastery 4 and we'll start to upgrade some of this stuff. Energy grid upgrades, add to level 2. Because we have the 1,250,000. So what you want to do first of all is get skills to around the 3 mark. So the skills that you need, get them to 3 first and then start working. Because that's when, that's, that's the quick times, that's when you're able to get skills quickly to a certain level. After rank 3 of each of the actual skills, it starts to slow down significantly. You'll be going upwards of 2 or 3 days from like uh, 12 hours to 2 or 3 days up to rank 4. And then from rank 4 to 5 can be upwards. Sometimes it can be 40 days just for one skill. It's, it's a bit insane sometimes. So we have shield operations. How much does it cost to buy and train? 71,000. We actually haven't got that much money. Hmm, we're gonna have to go and sell. Right, so there's a navigation, that's done. How much is that one? That one is 48. So we just need to go make some money to start getting some more skills in here. This is actually the first episode is turned into a beginner's guide of how to actually get into the game. I didn't want it to be that way, but it's turned out that way. Tell you what I'll do for now is we'll swap over to this, right, this view here. So this one over here is the agency. What you wanna do is go into the agency tab and you go to mission agents epic arcs this is where you go and do your sisters of eve stuff there's a lot of lore in there it's quite nice it's good for me everyone knows i love lore 
Did the agent find out which helps you get the level two, three, four, and five mission agents in high sec and some other ones. So you've got here, which is the career agents. This is what you want when you're starting out. If you have an idea of what you want to be, if you want to be a space trucker, if you want to be a miner, if you want to be an industrialist, if you want to be a uh, a policeman running around doing the, the military career stuff, advanced military career. But what we want, maybe it is under business. Let's have a look. Let's go and have a look. We'll head over to, uh, where is it sending us to? Kusta. Pfft, don't know where that is. So you have the route over here. When you set a destination, it shows you which systems you're going to be going through. Light green being, so this sort of, I might be colorblind right now. But the really light green here, the aqua green sort of thing, that is your very high sec. So your 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1.0. Uh, no, sorry, your 0 0.9 and 1.0, which basically in security standards, just how quickly Concord comes and fucks people up who try to kill you. And then you have the 0 0.A, which is a sort of lighter color because it takes them a little bit longer to get to you. Your 0.5 is a yellow, which takes the longest in high sec to get to. Then you have low sec, which is your lighter orange to dark orange. And then your red, which will be null sec, 0 0.0 to minus 1.0. And don't expect anyone to come and save you in that way. They won't, just they won't save you whatsoever. So once you have this set in and you have everything over here, you want to click this first one on the overview which will put the yellow marker at the top and this is where you have to go to next in your destination there are currently four jumps out and i thought i'd just talk talking a little bit about the chats that you have in the bottom left so you have your corp chat which will be there in the beginning this is sort of your starter corp there's a lot of people that will help you in there but there's also a lot of people that will fuck you over in there so you have to be sort of careful with that one local chat ignore it never the only thing you ever have to worry about you can actually just scoot this whole thing over there you can if you could I would delete it. What you want to worry about is this over here. When we're doing stuff like hauling, we need to find out if there's anyone in the system that is either orange or red. So this person here is actually in your corporation, your starter corporation. So I haven't seen anyone so far that's been orange or red, but we're in like uh, the starter zone. You'd have to be a proper wank stain to fly around here killing people because this is where all the new, new people come in. Like there's set areas in space where all the new people come in at. Depending on which race you pick, obviously, depends on where you start. Now, I haven't played in high sec for as long as I can remember. I haven't played in high sec. I've never done any of the Triglavian invasions. I've never done. I did have a character for a long time who did incursions, but literally the only thing I would do was fly to the base where the incursion team warped to me was doing their stuff. And then I would do the incursions. I would never do anything outside of the incursion. So I'd just be jumping around in a fleet from place to place doing the incursions. I know the gist. I know the basics. I know it's a lot harder to live in high sec than it is to live in null sec when you have an umbrella around you. And if you don't know what an umbrella is, it's where the alliance or corp that you're in have stupid amounts of capital ships and blah, blah. They can just, like, they, they'll jump on someone trying to kill you when you're in an Atron or some shit. And then they'll jump in with an, uh, it's, it's kind of, kind of ridiculous, which is why I went wormholes to get away from all that bollocks. Active. We're one jump out from where we need to go. So we're going to continue on when we're there. So we are finally here and new offer, limited time, limited time Omega offer. And I've just literally got Omega. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. That might be something we get later on for the, for not for now. Right. So now I've got the little bit of anger out of the way because they just offered me a cheaper Omega after I just paid for Omega, which is special in its own way. We'll go to the career agents. So we're going to go for the business agent, which I've just made sure was the actual hauling agent we wanted to go for. You can see here, so th this is where you sort of learn how to do missions. The career agents are basically teaches you how to play the game in their respective careers. So you have the advanced military, which you'll do quests like killing rats and blah, blah, blah. If you want to play the game by killing NPCs, then that's the way you want to go. It sort of teaches you how to fly your ships, how to militarily fly your ships. So you can learn how to PVP as well in those missions. Then you have the industry, industry, industry career, which is your mining and your building of stuff. I don't know if they do any building stuff in the career for that. I'm not, I've never done it. 
but we're going to go and in the cargo one data sheet we're going to accept this and they want us to bring it to Algagili Algagile Algagile 9 Moon 3 Bank of Luminaire Depository and we want to take a data sheet so we're going to accept this quest and we're going to go you need to get the data sheet so when you're doing like hauling stuff so basically you want to go into I don't know where I want to go I don't want to go into your email we go into here go into your item hangar there this is where all of your ship stuff will be like all of your all of your items all of your ships your ships will be in the ship hangar and the item hangers where your modules and stuff will be and your ore and your minerals etc when you're doing these quests i the amount of times that i've heard people have picked up the career agent missions gone there and said oh it's bugged i've seen it all over the in interwebs and everything so basically you want to pick up the stuff when you're doing quests make sure there's nothing in the item hanger maybe you have to pick something up from here you don't want to fly all the way there and have to fly back again to pick it up and fly back again it's a nightmare so make sure that you have the item you need to do for the mission inside of your ship so now we're going to undock and with this it sort of teaches you but normally when you're doing these missions you have to find out where you need to go to you right click it set destination what this is going to do it does it for you with the agent mission so it's kind of teaching you so you want to set your destination the destination is there we want to fly over to algagile algagile can't speak for the love of mary we should have already warped i don't know why that that took an extremely exceedingly long time to warp another also big thing for you if you're starting out in the beginning and that is the rookie help there are a lot of people in here who literally make it they they play this game to help people and it's actually really amazing what some of them do obviously that you're going to have a lot of trolls in there like any other gaming community there's going to be a lot of people in there that talk shit but mostly there are people in there that really want to help you grow and they want the game to succeed they want the game to be better they want newer players to stay and there are a lot of people who don't give a shit like any other community about new players staying because they just only give a shit about their own self-gratification and there's a lot of them in EVE Online a lot of them now I love this universe I love this game but I left for that very reason of the amount of the change of people, the people that have been left behind are not the people who I played with, not the people I grew to love during playing this game. And it's sad, but gamers are different now. They don't have the same respect as they had when we were kids getting like when you when I was playing Eve online, I was only a kid. I was like, what, 2003, 2004, I was 14, 15 years old. Most people playing this game were in their 40s. 30s and 40s you were playing with adults now it's just like 18 year olds who oh it's just depressing it's depressing it's depressing it's a different world it's a completely different world but the ships and everything look a hell of a lot better than they did when we i was playing in 2004 that's for damn sure and the avatars they're much better it looked the avatars back in the when eve online first came out when i used to play it when it first came out even in a beta the characters looked like world of warcraft mixed with uh sort of terry pratchett the characters with big chins and there's like elongated nose it, they were ugly as hell but it was it was it was nice it was nice i think we have to so what we're gonna have to do i've not again this is my first time doing these career agents i haven't done this before so we're gonna put it into the item hanger let's see if that works and we're going to complete the mission and we made a big old chunk of isk fantastic well big old chunk of isk you could probably make that by slapping like a frigate rat but let's not let's not it, it's good we're liking this we're liking this this site contains special ship restrictions. This site is restricted to certain ship types. You may only use the Velator to you may, you may use your Velator to access it. So you need industrial. So venture, what's this? But this is the business career path. And they're gonna give us a venture as a reward. That's not what we want. That is not what we want. So why is it giving us a venture in the business one when they have the industry for the okay, okay. Let's not get into that. Let's just carry on with the missions. We'll accept this one actually get some of those skills we needed now and we got them by going into the ship tree going to the ship which we're going to be using maybe over here show info 
We're going to go to the master. We're not going to go to that one over there just yet. But we're going to see if we can buy some of these. Fuel conservation. 48,000. Buy and train. Thank you very much. And then we're going to get the, the acceleration control. Almost at evasive maneuvering. We're going to get that. That's level 1 over there. And we're going to grab shield operations. Which we don't actually need for this ship. I don't know why it's asking you to get it. Because it's not a shield ship. But well, we'll see... Well, I mean, it tells you to do stuff you don't actually have to do. So I'm sure, unless the Nereus is shielded by itself, I'm sure, like, these... Maybe it's just, uh, the actual DST that isn't shield. Show info. Okita. See, even this one's got the shield operation, and it's got the mechanics and stuff. But a lot of... See, a lot of the skills that are in the hauling, from the beginning, they can be used across the entire game. So it's like, it's most of the skills that you're going to get for your hauling ships... You're already going to have as a PvP flyer, as a ratter, as a person running and mining. Most of this stuff you will already have. So all you need to do is just get the skills needed for the actual transport ships. Which is your Galente Industrial, your Kadari Industrial, your Amar Industrial, etc, etc. So let's go and do a couple more of these quests. We're going to go and find out. Uh, we will be back once we get to the actual station. If you'd like to see more in-depth tutorials and guides on EVE Online, I can do those. I didn't want to spend too much time on doing it because we don't know exactly when EVE Echoes is coming out. So I didn't want to get halfway through a series of guides for the game when we could learn sort of as I'm playing through the series. So if you have any questions, then please do ask down below if you have any questions about EVE Online or any of its mechanics or any skills that you need. What any road you want to go down please let me know and i will try to answer them for you but if guides are what you do want and guides are what you want to see because i i can't find any updated guides for eve online for god knows how long like uh, the lone wolf used to be very good at doing them you have a few other people who used to be very good and i, I really enjoyed watching the lone wolf's content it, even though i wasn't playing eve online in high sec i enjoyed watching his content he had some very interesting stuff in there and it was very helpful for the newer players which in turn gave us content which in turn made the game better so the offered the quest you'll normally when you're doing this and you want to accept the quest when you find out where the offered quest is you go set the destination you get to the station and then on the right hand side under the agents you'll have offered where you've already seen that one so now we need to accept this one and get a venture for some reason not sure why we're getting a venture but we're going to get a venture someone will probably let me know down below why there's a venture in there but i just don't understand myself so remember, when you pick up these quests, you go into inventory, you go into your item hanger, and you make sure... What? That's not Black Box. This is Pavilion Salvager. Or is the quest to pick up something from somewhere else? Drop off location. Black Box. Location. So go out there, find whatever remains of the ship, and use the salvaging module I gave you to retrieve the Black Box. Okay. So we need to read quests from now on, but we need to read the missions not so used to this i'm normally just used to fitting a four billion isk ship and going and killing blue loot so i need to learn how to play this sort of stuff again do we have the skills for it i'm sure you start off with the skills but what can we do so we need to go out and finish this quest so i'll see you once we get to the spot i have to say this is one ugly ass ship so we just got this in activities we updated the journal but we need to head off to the next place which is luminaire Luminaire. So with these quests where you have to go to a certain part of dead space, which is a space, an instance part of space where people can't actually get to, it will come up on the left hand side. Only when you're doing the agent missions, only when you're doing the starter missions, come up on the left hand side, you have to warp to location. And the sort of the warp animation will put you in a part of space that no one else can get to, which is quite nice. And this, if you've not seen one before, is an activation gate. So this is the part where it actually puts you into the instance. Activate gate. All right, what's this guy over here? Is this, a, this is the Serpentis. Bad guy. So you want to control left click on the bad guys. You want to approach. We're going to put the booster on. We're going to get into range. Now, when you're PvPing, never, <laughs> never go straight at someone these guys it won't matter and you don't even want to do it with rats or npcs like uh you just don't you just kill this guy outright i don't even know what range is on these guns at the moment i haven't even tried it uh ranges optimals 5 to 80 we're close enough now so maybe you're gonna take a couple of shots but when you run when you fly straight towards a target they're gonna be firing at you and it's never gonna miss because if, uh, 
the weapons are just not going to miss you. And this is what happens when you have any kind of wreck as well. You want to grab, lock onto the target, use the salvager. This should open it for you. Your attempt to access the civilian transport has failed this time. It keeps going round and round and round. And it worked the second time. Now normally it just picks stuff up so I'm not sure why it's doing that but we want to pick up the black box and we put the black box inside of the ship and then we can just set destination and we'll head back. Docking permission accepted. There we go. Thank you for letting me in sir. Right so we're going to start the conversation here again. In the left hand side it will be there that will not always be there unless they've changed it. They might have changed that. Again, let me know down below if they've changed that. So we're going to complete this one. Our rewards will be a venture and the bonus reward for finishing it within a certain amount of time is 255k. So we've made our first 500,000 isk and there is the beginning of our journey as a hauler and we now have a venture. So we have a new quest that's been offered. Let's see what that's been offered as we get a civilian miner. And this is the business career path. Why are we getting civilian miners and reprocessing under the business career path? I won't understand and I won't get it. But we'll continue on and see what's happening with this one. But that'll be it for this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. I really hope you've sort of give, I've given you a taste of what EVE Online is at the very beginning. And hopefully I helped some of you out. This will be an entire series on going from the start of the game, not in Alpha, in Omega, the start of the game and becoming a hauler within the game. I don't have as much time to put in to do all kinds of other stuff. So it's, it's an activity I can do where I don't have to pay 100% attention to it at all times. Now, I will say one thing that you should pay 100% attention to it at all times, but I can't always do it at this moment working from home with the things that are going on at the moment. And the baby is almost born, so I don't even know how that's going to be once that happens. I'm going to have two kids running around like mental patients. But I really hope this helped you. Put a thumbs up if you liked it. Sub if you want to see some more. And I hope to see you in the next episode. Fly safe.